I just stopped in here at Oleg's trading post. And, uh, just curious, who's here? It's different now. I have my whole party with me. I'll go ahead. Bucken is still here. Bucken smiles at you. Oh, it's you! Want to buy anything? Hey, uh, hello, Bucken. Would you like to become my court alchemist? The old man peers at you with an inquisitory squint. A court alchemist? Me? That'd be a first. Bakken finally sighs and waves his hand. Ah, fine. Come with me. You've been kind to me. Killed those damn spiders and brought an old man some berries. I'll work for you. Just one thing, though. I need a new laboratory. Some place to keep all my bottles and ingredients. A workshop, yes. And as for me, don't you worry. I'll do my part. All right, thank you. Well done, Oleg. The court alchemist. Jod Kavkin came up with a brilliant idea. Why not hire Bakken as the court alchemist? Oh, that was his idea? I didn't realize. His potions would prove most useful. Gods know any adventurer worth their salt empties more glassware a day than a bragging drunkard. Well, they certainly do in this game. All that's left is to build a laboratory for the alchemist in our settlement in the outskirts region. Then he can start his work. Settlement in the outskirts region. Huh? A fine day to you. What brings you by? Well, I thought you might have something interesting to say, Oleg, but apparently you don't. You're just a plain old vendor of no consequence whatsoever. You've got some cool weapons, though. Not that anybody in our party actually needs them. Well, never mind. The path is clear. What's happening inside here? Svetlana, the wife. Of Oleg. Svetlana gives you a slight bow. Greetings, your grace. Nothing new to say. My old Shred stomping light. grounds. The bedroom upstairs. Nobody's here. Hey, there's a chest. I've failed. It's locked. Oh no. Oh well. I tried to steal from you, Svetlana. But I failed. Well, that's it. Nothing else here. Oleg's place is a bust. So I'm still out here trying to find the nymph's tree. Now, according to the journal... Um... It's growing inside the ruins in the middle of the woods. Now, the problem is, I don't know where the ruins are in the middle of the woods. I've been sort of wandering around on the map. Been wandering looking for anything like ruins. Um, but the problem is, I don't know where that is. Well, wait. Oh, there it is. I found it. <laughs> it's way over there. It's the Verdant Chambers, mossy ruins on the shore of a small, quiet forest stream. Okay. You know, I was wondering, why didn't it show me where it was on the map? Well, it did. It actually did. There's the Candlemere Tower. I didn't scroll over here to see what else is over here. I can't zoom out though, so it's kind of annoying. Um, there's also this ford across the Skunk River. So how do we... Presumably, we have to go across the ford in Skunk River, or... We can go... 
across the river here, perhaps? Possibly? Into the... the dire gnarl marches. Oh, that sounds dangerous. That sounds very dangerous. Perhaps we should not do that. Uh, well, let's go... Um... I claimed a couple of resources on the way. I'm gonna... I'm gonna head back and claim some resources along the way and um, figure out what to do from there. I just successfully evaded a random encounter, but it looks like we have a new event here. Artisans, you have met an artisan, a special character who can craft equipment for you from tough armor and powerful weapons to magic jewelry and scrolls. You will find one in every region of the Stolen Lands. Some of them arrive to you on their own and others can be found in settlements. Having your own artisan is troublesome and expensive and it's up to you to decide whether you want to help a particular artisan or not. Every artisan you meet will ask you for a favor. As soon as you fulfill the request, the workshop blueprint will appear in the settlement. An artisan with a workshop receives payment from the treasury and crafts weapons or armor for you at your request or of their own accord. Each artisan you hire will eventually request your help in creating a special item. Complete their special quest to unlock a masterpiece, an extraordinary piece of gear. The artisan will inform you that they're prepared to start working on a masterpiece and ask you to stop placing specific orders in the meantime. Huh. Okay. The events are Bandit's Outrage. It's a problem. Several bandit encampments have emerged in the Gnarl Marches. They plunder the peasants, rob travelers and merchants, and even attack even attack tax gatherers. These bandits need to be muzzled. Oh, well, I would send a Mary, but she's busy. The other problem is troll sightings. Bands of marauding trolls have been seen throughout the region. The people are frightened and beg for protection. Wait, I thought... I thought we already had somebody looking for trolls. Hmm, I thought I was out looking for trolls. Troll invasion, yeah. Keston arrived at the castle with reports of strange... Tro strange trolls swarming... The Gnarl Marges. The v I was successful. The visitors met with the Baron. Okay, yeah, I thought we already dealt with that. Guess not. Wait. Did I... Is this my only chance to deal with these things? I don't... I need... I need alternative... Uh, I need alternative advisors. Amiri's busy with troublemakers, but she's also busy with my party right now. Oh well. I was trying to get... Uh, Trying to get some resources before I head back. My strength betrays me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta camp again. Always gotta camp. Rigongar, tell me. You and Octavia are so different. What keeps you together? Ask what doesn't. We've been together since we were kids in chains. And now that we're free, we're together in battle. <laughs> Well, that sounds rather strange. That's almost as strange as my vivisection work. Fruits and berries. Available for claiming. Yeah, I claimed a couple of these on the map. New events. Found a v new village. A point treasure. I, I would love to appoint somebody treasurer, but I can't. <laughs> I don't... There isn't anybody. Unfortunately. Um... Let's go to the tavern. Uh, 
I'm uncertain how to resolve these things. Perhaps one of these citizens can help me. Elini, Elina. There's a Miri. Elina the barkeep. Behind the inn's bar stands a young woman with a with curly red hair, a round face, and rosy cheeks. She gives you a friendly smile, fixing her cap. It's so nice of you to stop by, your grace. I'm Alina, the innkeeper. Well, hello, Alina. Tell me about yourself. I'd be happy to, your grace. I love to talk, especially about myself. Uh, well, where are you from? What land? Which family? I hail from the River Kingdoms, our tomb to be precise. I'm from a farming family just like about everybody from around here. There's more fertile land and pasture there than anywhere in the River Kingdoms except for maybe Seven Marches. The folks who grow crops and tend battle, tend, <laughs> tend cattle, are well respected there. But at the same time they live in constant danger. There's too many bad people, too lazy to work all day, don't mind taking other people's things. And, uh, why did you decide to become an innkeeper? I was bored. Please don't get me wrong, I was fine at Father's Farm, and I've got nothing but respect for farmer's work. But in our back country, you could go half a year without seeing one new face. No news, nothing happening. I've dreamed of working in an inn since I was a child. That's the kind of place where there's always lots of guests and stories. Where does this inn's name come from? I don't know the name of the inn, but perhaps you will remind me what the name of the inn is when you explain the name of the inn. Oh, don't ask. It's too funny. I kept thinking about what name to pick, choosing just the right one, but not one to waste time. I drew a beer mug on the door. I figured folks would just see it and come on in. So the locals got used to calling the place the Beer Mug Inn. So the name stuck. Oh, all right. The Beer Mug Inn. Alright, well tell me about the River Kingdoms. A month wouldn't be long enough to tell it all, Your Grace. Each kingdom is a special place all its own. Elves live in one of them. Another one, half of the country belongs to the Murderers Guild. And the other half gives them their orders. They say they even get locals discounts. There's just one thing that unites us all, like a strong thread keeps a quilt together. It's the Six River Freedoms. The, uh, Six River Freedoms? What's that? Yes, the first freedom. Say what you will, I live free. Doesn't mean you won't get beaten up for what you say, though. The second freedom? Well, if you can call it a freedom. Oathbreakers die. Those who break oaths get killed just like that. So people prefer not making any oaths at all. The third freedom? Walk any road, float any river. Once the ruler of Haibar decided to build a gate across the river and collect a fee for each passing boat. Well, there's no more Haibar. The fourth freedom is even worse than the second one. Courts are for kings. Whatever a king says goes. Well, as long as he doesn't say to build a gate across a river, I suppose. Now for the fifth. Slavery is an abomination. Nothing to explain there. Runaway slaves from all over come to us for a reason. And the six, you have what you hold. It means that theft is a much worse crime than robbery, if you catch my drift. You can honestly beat a robber and keep what's yours, but a thief acts on the quiet. Shame on him. That's just disrespectful. Well, uh, thank you, Elena. We will discuss this another time. Um... Say, all the news in the whole region must pass through this inn. What rumors have you heard? Lately, everyone's been talking about the tower at the Candlemere. They say lights were dancing around it like a busy cook stove. Everyone who saw it says different things. Some witnessed a dragon and some glowing hamsters crawling from the lake. They're probably all lying, but the place is definitely spooky and mysterious. Oh, Candlemere, named for the myriad mysterious dancing lights sometimes seen near the water's surface under moonlight. Possessing a remarkably clear surface and surrounded by a great collection of trees, the lake is well known for the vibrant colors it takes on from the leaves that become trapped within it. In the center of the lake stands a small island. 
hilly, speckled with willows, and featuring the ruins of an ancient and crumbling tower. According to local legend, drinking from the Candomir during certain seasons will have particular effects on the drinker, though there is no agreement as to the exact relationship between the seasons and the effects. Mm-hmm, that's the place that's on my map that was not there before. All right, well, goodbye, Lena. Thank you for all the information. Come back soon, Your Grace. No one can treat you better than me. Well, I don't know. I hear good things about the nymph, the, the, the guardian of the bloom. If I can ever find, find her out there. All right, we're out of here. Oh, no, we're not. Wait, who else is here? Honorial Eight Eyes? Hey, maybe we can hire them. Are you a treasurer? Hey, okay, who is Honorial Eight Eyes? What sort of person is this? Hey, you're the local baron now, right? Congratulations, the stag lord was a real bastard. It's a good thing you killed him. Sometimes justice still triumphs, right? For what it's worth, I've decided to move to the capital. Living at Oleg's is horribly boring. But here, look around. I can feel the rhythm of life. Oh yes, you're the person... Uh, yeah, the Pathfinder Society. Who are you people again? What is the purpose of this society? It's a school of adventurers. We search for those who are eager to test their skills and educate them and give them ideas about where on Galarian they might seek their fortune. All right. And what was that story that you told before? Uh, remind me how the last campaign of the Reckless Six began? Honorio remains silent for a long time, as if wondering if she wishes to poke the old wound. Well, here's the story. Our leader, Vermelt, was the best of us. Wise, brave, friends with everyone. One of those friends, Advian... Adivi... Okay, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care that much. Let's talk about something else. Never mind, in fact, I have to go. I feel like I've, I've heard that story before, actually. I don't want to do that again. There's Amiri. Hey, Chief! Amiri gives you a broad grin. What's on your mind? Nothing. Why are you here and not doing your work? You have work to do, I think. All right, well, I guess that's it for this place. What's the point of it? What is that place? I think I have a temple under construction. So I need to figure out what to do next, I think. Um, and I'm not sure how to do that. I think I have some maintenance to do on my kingdom. So far, I haven't gotten bored with the kingdom maintenance. Oh, I should have gone to the throne room. Uh, yeah, let's go to the throne room. I've got some business to attend to. I think. I'm not sure if... Do I have any time limits on anything at the moment? I'm not precisely sure. I definitely have things to do. Three merchants from Absalon. Okay, everybody's busy. I need everybody to finish their tasks, please. How do we do that? Yes, I would, I would like for everyone. Oh, well, there's one ancient curse broken to bits by the daring 
Baron and his loyal friends. We repelled the attack of creatures summoned by ancient spells, and peace has settled over the barony once more. But how long will it last? Yay, we defeated the curse of spiders. Hooray. Hooray for us. Um... It's time to discuss the events related to the bald hilltop. Huh, okay. Well, let's go to the throne room, I guess. Your grace, we are victorious. We fought off the spider invasion and defeated the strange triad who led them. As a sign of gratitude, your subjects have special reward for you. 2,800 gold coins. I wonder, was this flood of spiders truly caused by that curse? I mean, the curse must be ancient and very ominous. The spiders were definitely scary as hell, but they weren't ancient and ominous. As the spiders were scary. I... Ugh, whatever. <laughs> I agree with Lindsay. This does seem strange. Seems more like the plot of an insane dryad than a true curse. Then how can we explain the dismal atmosphere on the bald hilltop? The pressure both of us felt there, Jod. Mayhap, maybe, the curse drove the poor dryad insane, causing her to lead this spider invasion into the barony. Tristian shakes his head incredulously. In any case, I have alarming news. As soon as the spider invasion was over, I visited the bald hilltop again. It's grown quiet once more, and just as gloomy as before. I don't think the curse is broken. It's just laying low, like a monster that rests before it feeds again. What? Again? I I'm sorry for bringing the bad news. Unfortunately, we failed to defeat this curse for good. Well, how much time do we have, Tristian? Oh, a fair amount. I'd say half a year, or even more. Now that the bald hilltop is quiet again, I can barely feel its evil will. I'm sure we will have enough time to prepare for the next attack. Hmm... I want to deal with this problem once and for all. What do you recommend? Yes, let's level the bald hilltop to the ground and put an end to this curse. Alright, calm down, Lindsay. Well, I doubt we will be able to defeat it in such a straightforward fashion. The heart of the curse is undoubtedly centered on the bald hilltop, but the spiders appeared all throughout the barony. I don't think we are going to do any damage to the curse by destroying the hilltop. I would expect exactly the opposite. We'd only provoke it into attacking again, immediately on the heels of the last. No, the best we can do for now is make sure we are prepared for the next attack. Don't be such a pessimist, Tristan. I might truly be able to overcome the curse, but only by studying it thoroughly. Your grace, I will gather all the information available on this situation and get to work. All right, Jod Kavkin. Now there's somebody who knows how to deal with a problem. Get to work, Jod Kavkin. I will, sir. Let's prepare for the next attack. Very wise. If only we knew more about the curse, we might figure out some way to fight it. Lindsay frowns. I, I don't understand. I spoke to the locals. They never had any spider invasions before. And nothing ever happened on the bald hilltop before, either. Now both spiders and the curse? Right when the new barony appeared in the Stolen Lands? All of this seems highly coincidental. Well, you're not wrong, Lindsay, but... What can we do but end the dialogue? An Ancient Curse, Part 2. Wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, the spider invasion has been dealt with, but is that the last we'll hear from the dark curse that threatens us on the bald hilltop? I guess there's only one way to find out. We'll just have to be patient and wait. The next development will be in 192 days and 10 hours. 
get ready for anything, it says. What kind of curse is this? Why did it decide to attack us now? And the main question, will it be spiders this time or something even scarier? I'm beginning to get nervous. I think we should probably level up before that time. Probably going to be worse than spiders and dryads. So, again, what do I do now? I still got these trolls to deal with, but where are they? Not that map. I want the other map. The big map. Give me the big map. Um... Well, uh, I, I need to figure out what to do next. I guess we can continue to wait. I do want my advisors back. But I do also want to deal with these other things, but I can't yet. So I gotta wait. Research into the nature of curses, bald hilltop. I can't assign anybody to do anything, so I just gotta wait. We got another- like every day something pops up and uh... Don't know what to do. Build points are the barony's main resource. Okay, why did that come up? Amari's back! The problem has been dealt with triumphantly. Our guards and soldiers managed to capture the instigators before the region descended into full rebellion. Amari dealt with the unknown troublemakers. No rebellions in this barony. Um, okay, so... That means we can perhaps send her to deal with the bandits' outrage. Amiri, go handle those bandits. Hmm, not a very good success chance, but whatever. Oh, troll sightings. I should have sent her to deal with the trolls. This should be attended before one Rova 47. Why doesn't it give me like a number of days? How am I supposed to know what one Rova is? Nine. I guess... I guess Rova is the ninth month and Aridus is the eighth month. So, this is only a few days away. I don't think I'm going to be able to deal with these troll sightings. Alright, let's skip a day. It's the 25th of Aridus. The 26th of Aridus. And we have failed at an opportunity. Lander, you've let me down. The regent failed to make an enticing offer about the fair. And the artisan decided to leave the stolen lands. Well... Oh well. The self-taught master, crafting items of extraordinary beauty and rare quality, has decided to leave the stolen lands. Landa, you failed me again! Okay, it is now... All right, an important visitor has arrived at the castle and demands an audience at once. Stefano Masconi, the man before you reeks of vanity. His black hair is curled, styled, and generously waxed from the hair atop his head to the points of his mustache. His cheeks and forehead are powdered white, giving him a pallid look. His hand rests casually on the golden hilt of his rapier. 
As he approaches, a mean, sly smile appears on his face, clearly practiced and prepared in advance. Ah, oh, the ruler of this barony. I'm flattered by your attention. Sir Stefano Moscone of Pitax, at your service. The man performs a derisive bow. Well, uh, what brings a Pitaxian noble to my barony? I was just traveling back home to glorious Pitax after paying a visit to Restoff, all in service to King Castracini Irovetti. I thought I might take a day to visit the capital of Pitax's bold new neighbor. Sir Stefano sniffs, then grins. I must say, I really should have spared myself the trouble. It's hardly worth seeing. Well, I'd watch my tone, were I you, lest I send you back to Patax sooner than you'd planned. And now we resort to insults. Hardly surprising. Sir Stefano lets out a long sigh, tapping his rapier. Well, I... You aren't worth the glove it would take to challenge you. Besides, you'd probably just run off and hawk it. It's easily worth twice what you've got in this throne room. Sir Stefano stares at you and snorts. You know, uh, the initial goal of my visit was to take measure of your so-called barony to see if you had anything of value to offer to Pitax. And do you know what I found? Nothing. You have absolutely nothing to offer. Sir Stefano continues on without giving you a chance to respond. Military. Weak. Culture. Weak. Economy. Weak. You'd best pray to all the gods that my King Irivetti doesn't declare war on you. On the other hand, maybe you should pray he conquers you. This mess of a barony could use the rule of a proper king. Um... Sir Stefano, please be frank with me. Have you ever had the pleasure of being acquainted with the hooves of a jackass? Other than your own feet, I mean. Sir Stefano opens his mouth, then immediately closes it. Now, allow me to personally tax your cortege so as to help improve my economy. And as taxes are especially high this year, I do hope you'll be able to pay. The punishment for failure to pay is imprisonment. Sir Stefano, furious, starts to speak. My king will not stand for... Ah, oh, yes, King Irovetti. Worry not, I'll be sure to send him a melancholic missive relaying news of your tragic fate. What? Sir Stefano pauses mid -rant. My... my tragic fate? Uh, yes, the tragic fate you met after attempting to escape your chains. Now, if there's nothing more, I'd suggest you go replaster your face with whatever makeup you've been using. Your cheeks are so bright, the red glow must be visible from Absalom. I'll take my leave now. And good day to you, sir. Well, that was fun, Lindsay, but I fear we've made a powerful enemy this day. Well, yeah, you're probably right about that. What's in this chest over here? Ooh, it's my personal stash. Let us be careful. Um, okay, well, now what? What's next? What's next on the agenda for governing this this place? Oh, that was a successful problem dealt with. <laughs> Relations plus one. <laughs> Um, let's see. Proposal for cooperation. Three merchants from Absalom arrived. Uh, Lander, after your tragic failure left, uh, last time, please do better this time. Cooperating with merchants, if you don't mind, I'm going to give you a crisis point to make sure you succeed this time.
27th of Eridus. The 28th of Eridus. News has arrived from the largest observatory. Hey, Harim is back from the observatory in the Five Kings Mountains. It was a triumphant success. The high priest ceremony was a success. The enchanted wind enhanced the prayers of the citizen and raised them up into the sky. What? Did they all float away? Well, in any case, our divine stat has gone up by eight to uh, a whopping 15. We're turning into a theocracy, apparently. Uh, a heartbroken mother begs for help. The event of the month. The troll sightings will... Okay, I think the troll sightings are about to expire. I don't have anybody to assign. Can I have her, like, abandon that other one? Canceling... Okay, we gotta cancel the bandit's outrage and go for the troll thing. I think. I don't know. I don't want to fail the bandit thing. Bandits or trolls? Which one do we want? <laughs> Alright, let's skip another day. Well, a heartbroken mother has arrived begging for help. Another problem in the kingdom that we have to deal with. Alright, Lindsay, let's deal with this problem. A peasant woman, her face soaked with tears, approaches you quickly. Oh, your grace, woe is me. I've met my darkest hour. You're my last hope. By all the gods ever prayed to, don't leave me in need. My name is Jenna, Jenna Tannerson. Our village is a short way from here. It's been two days since my boy Tig ran away, and I haven't seen him since. We've searched and searched, but it's no use. If you don't find him, no one else will. Well, do you have any idea where he might be? Jenna looks around cautiously and whispers, There's this old hag in the Gnarl Marches, a swamp witch. I won't say her name out loud. Don't you even ask. The mere thought of her chills the blood in my veins. She has the evil eye and she eats people. She even turns into a black raven and soars in the sky. It's sure as day she took my boy. Ah, uh, do dis do people disappear here frequently? They sure do. There are so many hazards around, it's hard to name them all. Wild beasts in the forest and monsters and some troblins and bandits and whatever. Even adults have a hard time surviving here. And for a little kid. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'll try to find him, I suppose. Oh, your grace, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be praying to Aristil to grant you long life. If there's any news, I'll be nearby in the tavern. May the good gods help you. The sobbing woman leaves. Oh. A lost child. Well, Lindsay, what are we going to do about this? What kind of parents would let their child roam through the woods where even seasoned adventurers might become something snack? Looks like our Baron may have to babysit his subjects, literally. Heeding the hopeless pleas of our poor village woman named Jenna Tannerson, we're heading out to look for her missing son Tig, an innocent child who was fool enough to take a stroll through the dangerous forest. We should hurry, or the little brat could end up as a little pile of bones. Oh, I have to go out and do this, then? Is that what you're saying? Hmm. Can we do that? Can we do that at the same time that I'm waiting for trolls and, and bandit troubles to be solved? Where is this Swamp Witch, I wonder? That's my question. Yeah. 
I really wish it was easier to exit these maps. Um, where is the swamp witch of which you speak? It's probably going to be in one of these new areas. Maybe? I don't see anything that tells me where the swamp witch is. Well, I have scrolled all over this entire map, and I cannot find where this lost child is through the dangerous forest. Where where are we supposed to go? I looked at every single one of these points, and I don't... Nothing pops up as where the, the location is, so I have no idea where to go. I just... How am I supposed to know where to go to do these quests? Shouldn't it, like, tell me somehow? <laughs> and also, wouldn't it be great if I could zoom out somehow? I don't know. Tuskdale, new events, nothing related to this thing. There's the Verdant Chambers, there's the Candlemere Tower. I scrolled all over this map and I'm looking for a, an exclamation point and there isn't one. So I don't know where to go to deal with this problem. So, so much for that. Back to the throne room, I guess. Um. Sorry, sorry, lady, I can't help you. It's the 29th of Eridus. Let's see if this troll thing disappears. See how many months, how many days there are in a month. It's the 30th of Eridus. The 31st of Eridus. The bandits outrage success. We dealt with the bandits. And we have one day left to assign Amiri to the troll sightings. Where she has an 80% chance of success. And let's see, the next day, I'm guessing, is going to be the first of Rova. Yay! I did it with one, uh, one day to spare. And it looks like Tristian has failed, uh, to deal with a giant weed taking over farmland. The messengers were sent to every region, but their warnings fell on deaf ears. The peasants refused to act and even accused the messengers of inviting disaster. Loyalty minus two. Event of the month. The locals are bored and don't know what to do with themselves. This is the perfect moment to hold a celebratory event. But what exactly? Uh... Harim? You don't really seem like the right person to do a celebratory event. But sure. Why not? Oh wow. Amiri's gone for 27 days dealing with these trolls. How do we, um... I'd really like to assign some... a, a treasurer. would be nice. How do I... how do I do... um... Is 
support the counselor's endeavors. Spend two weeks resolving the loyalty of citizens in the barony. Uh, let's get somebody for arcane or stability or culture. Okay, so that one was successful. How do we purchase BP? How do I improve these other ones? How do I raise these other stats? The relations, arcane, stability, so I can assign more people. How do I, how do, I do that? Does that happen over time? I feel like there's something I'm supposed to do to make that happen, but I'm not sure. Everybody's busy. And I don't... Why do I not have an economist? I need an economist. I need a treasurer. How do I get one? Um. Oh, founding a settlement. Maybe this is how I... I don't know. I don't really understand. I'm getting tired. I'm going to save here and uh, that'll be it for tonight.